out there, there are any number of organizations. The New York Times is one of them. The big foundations are another. Um, universities, many of them are complicit in this in many ways, have a very distinct political agenda. Now, political agendas involve moral canvases, and that's fine, as long as you respect, to my mind, the basic, what, logic, um, evidence, truth, the search for truth. And the search for truth has been suspended in favor of social justice. In other words, I mean, I don't think that you can have social justice and not have the truth. In fact, it's very dangerous because if you, all, you, know, if you, if you, if you put social justice as the end of what your inquiry, that leads you very, very dangerous places because who's to say what social justice is? One of the problems with woke culture is that it's, it's uh, on both sides, I think, a mistake about scale. So uh, on the one hand, of course, there's a huge scale. There's um, the history of slavery in the United States, which is this massive, profound thing which infects everything, the architecture of the cities, the, um, the, uh, you know, the economy of, of many parts of the country still. Um, and uh, so that seems very big, but it, it, it can't be addressed on a large scale. It has to be addressed with real people, with real human beings, in a way that it has a real impact on their lives. And the same at a university. You have many groups of people, as Leon was talking about, lots of universities are more diverse than they used to be. And you have also universities uh, reducing everything to economies of scale. So they're, they're teaching at a mass level these people from all over. There's no community, there's no respect for the individual, there's no sense that um, the inevitable conflicts that are going to arise when you mix these people together have to be resolved in real human relationships, person to person and face to face. So I, I just want to say I think this, the, the, the problem of education is a, in, in, it, it's, it's very, very big, but it's also very, very small. There's a, there's a local aspect to it. And same with woke culture. There's a lot that can be, I have seen incredible difficulties diffused by a conversation. I've seen it again and again and again. And I've seen real reconciliation take place in conversation between real human beings, one of whom is suffering and one of whom caused the suffering. And that's, that's it seems to be the place where um, we should be thinking about. Because it. it's, it's not going to be solved at the level of um, destroying global capitalism or encouraging global capitalism or promoting democracy or whatever. It's going to be solved by peop real human beings gathering together and using what forces they have to I, make I, it I think certainly in America, we are suffering from a disastrous over politicization of the entirety of life. I think it used to be that Democrats and liberals and, and conservatives, liberals and conservatives, one of the few things they could agree on was the limits of politics. That there are places into which politics should not be allowed to penetrate. And one of those realms would be culture, I hope. Though, of course, as we know from totalitarian societies, in order for that politics to succeed, culture is the very first place they want to penetrate. Politics should not penetrate in what Sean called the search for truth. You know, in this we, I, a journal that I edit, we chose a motto from Maimonides. Every issue has this sentence from Maimonides, and the sentence is, accept the truth from whoever utters it. When you think of it that way, you've depoliticized the conversation completely. Later, you can get into the irony or the outrage that so-and-so has the temerity to say X and Y. But the first thing you need to do when you hear X and Y is ask, is it true? Is it true? And if you are not asking about the truth of the proposition first, then you have allowed politics to enter into a place where it does not belong. 